Okay, so the next bit in our transition metals, we're going to have a look at things called ligands and our transition metal complexes. Now, a transition metal complex, the definition here is a central metal ion surrounded by ligands. And ligands are either neutral molecules or they may be negative ions, which can donate electron pairs into the metal orbitals, forming a dative covalent bond. Now, we've met this term before, dative covalent bond, and that is when both electrons for that covalent bond come from the same source. So here is an idea. If we have ammonia, I've shown this before, this nitrogen has a lone pair, of, so a pair of non-bonding electrons. It can donate those electrons to an H plus ion, and in doing so forms a new covalent bond and now we have an ion, okay, the ammonium ion. So here, just showing each of these hydrogens has donated in the cross electrons. Nitrogen's electrons are represented by the circles. Both of these circles are this bond because it has donated both in order to form this covalent bond. That is what we're meaning by a dative covalent bond and that is what we are looking at in these transition metal complexes. Now, ligands can be classed in a couple of different ways. Monodentate ligands, they can only form one bond with the metal atom or the metal ion. So ammonia is one, it has one lone pair of electrons, one non-bonding pair. The chloride ion has a formal negative charge, it's negatively charged and it can um, donate in that um, negative charge. The cyanide ion, okay, so Cn-, minus, negatively charged again, can donate. And water can also form one bond using a lone pair on the oxygen, not both lone pairs. So water is another one. Um, this is just showing an idea of a complex with a central metal ion and different things that are donating in um, and the colour of it. Don't worry too much about that just now. Um, and this is the complex that looks very complicated. This is cobalt with four ammonium ions or ammonia ions and two chloride ions, but we'll talk about that. Bidentate ligands, you may have guessed, can form two bonds with the metal atom or ion. So you have two places in them that can, we say dentate, like teeth, like they're biting into the metal. Um, and to show you and kind of illustrate that, this EN, ethylene diamine, has two nitrogens on it. And both of those nitrogens have a non-bonding lone pair of electrons. So it can donate here and it can donate here in two places, so it can form two bonds, it is bidentate. The oxalate ion as well, this is negatively charged, but we have our oxygens here, both have negative charges, so that's why we have a two minus, there's a negative charge, it kind of gets dispersed in amongst, but they're here and here, so that's two places again that can donate into a central metal ion. And the way that would look is, if we had, say, our ethylene diamine here, there would be a nitrogen and the other one here, and they are connected in here as well, in here as well. So that would be three different ligands, but six different bite points, six different places that it has donated in. Now, there are some rules for naming and for writing out the formula of these complexes. This is where old advanced higher literature that you might look at or questions that you might attempt will be now classed as incorrect and it's because they have changed the way that they say it, they've slightly changed the way that we write it down and so please have a look and make sure that this matches up to whatever it is you're using. Um, so if a complex, to start off with, if a complex is a salt, so you would have your transition metal complex and another metal ion and I'll show you that in a second, or non-metal ion, um, the positive ion comes first and then the negative ion. Okay, it's always positive and negative. We've always done that. We've always said sodium chloride. We've never said chloride sodium. Positive before negative. In the name of the complex, it consists of two parts, all written together as one word. You name the ligands first, followed by the central transition metal ion. And here are the names of common ligands. So the ligand formula H2O is aqua. We've got amine for the amine ligand and carbonyl for CO. Now, if we have a look here, it used to be cyano, chloro, bromo, iodo, fluoro, so like the um, halogens. It's changed. We've added in idle, cyanidal, chloridal, fluoridal. It would be bromidal, 
oxide if it was just oxygen. So we're looking at our single negative charge ligands instead of just being something O, it's something idle. And that has changed from old advanced higher. So please make sure that you're using that now. So it's no longer chloro and bromo and fluoro, it's chloridal, bromidal, fluoridal. Um, and the amine ligand, the amine ligand has two M's in it. Um, we then have the name of the metal after the ligands, followed by its oxidation number in brackets. Again, we're looking still at the rules of the overall charge. Now this seems like a lot and just talking through the rules is going to blow people's heads, but we will go through some examples, so please do not panic. Um, if there's more than one type of ligand, they're named in alphabetical order. And if the charge on the complex part is negative, then the transition metal um, can adopt their Latin name, which are given here. So cuprate, ferrate, manganate, you know, quite a few here. Lead's always my favourite. The, the, uh, the Latin name for lead is plumbum. That's where the word plumber comes from because pipes used to be made of lead. Um, so every time I see something in Latin to do with lead, it makes me giggle because it's like plum or plumbum. Um, platinate, vanadate. So the, this is if the transition metal complex is negatively charged, you would use these instead of just the metal name. If it's positively charged, you just use the metal name. Who's lost? I'm sure you're lost having a look at it. Let's have a look at our first example. So I'm going to actually switch back to the paper. We're going to write this out and, and have a look at it so that I can kind of gesture the pen over the bits I'm talking about. So here we have a transition metal complex. A transition metal complex is always written in square brackets. Okay. This complex has an overall charge of 2 plus and we've already spoken about everything inside now has to make that charge. Okay, so we're essentially wanting to work out the oxidation number of copper and try and work out what's going on here. So when we have a look at this, this is an amine ligand, but remember we call it an amine ligand. There are four of them. Okay, so NH3 is my ligand. There are four of them. So I have tetraamine. Yes, I have two A's followed by two M's. My overall complex is positively charged, so I'm just going to take the name of the transition metal. So this becomes tetraamine copper, all one word. And then I need to work out what my oxidation number is. This has, sorry, my overall charge is 2 plus. This here, my amine ligands, um, these are neutral ligands. Right? You need to know that that, you need to know that amine ligands are neutral ligands, which I think, did I show that in the last slide? Let me just double check. I didn't know. Oh, no, I did. If I just quickly switch back to the PowerPoint, um, you will actually see that I missed out speaking about the charge. So water, amine and the carbonyl actually have no charge. They are neutral ligands. So that's something to think about. Sorry, I forgot to mention that at the time. So let's just jump back to looking at this. If these are neutral ligands, my overall charge is 2 plus. That can only be coming from the copper. And so it has an oxidation number of plus 2. I just put that as Roman numerals. Another example, let's have a look. Overall, my whole transition metal complex has a three minus charge. This is a cyanido ligand. There are six of them, so that's hexa cyanido. This is a negatively charged transition metal complex, so I am now going to use um, not just the metal name, I'm now going to say that this is ferrate, looking at my Latin name, hexacyanidal ferrate, but what number to put here? Cyanidal, remember I said that was negatively charged, so each one of these has a minus charge. Six minus charges coming just from my ligands. Overall, I'm at 3 minus, so this must be 3 plus to balance three of the negative charges to bring me from minus 3, sorry, minus 6 up to minus 3. Okay, so if I have 3 plus, 
and 6 minus, that equals 3 minus. I'm happy with that. So hexacyanidal ferrate 3. Now let's have a look with one that has a counter ion, Na2. So yeah, I'm actually copying these from the slides. I'm just not showing you the slides just now. Cl4. Here's a complex with a counter ion. I don't see any charges just now. Interesting. Sodium itself, each one of these has a plus one oxidation number, doesn't it? We know that sodium is always plus. So Na2 must equal plus two. This has to balance that. So my platinum tetrachloride, sorry, tetrachloride, must be minus two because this whole thing is neutral. There's no charge. Plus two coming from this, so this must be minus two. So now let's have a look at this with this being, I'll do it over here, platinum, four fluorines. But this must be two minus to balance my two positive charges. So this, I have chloride ligands. I have four of them, so tetra. Tetrachloridal. It's platinum, but it's negative, so it becomes platinate. I'm like going down in a wee bit of a spot here, I do apologise. Each one of these is negative. There are four minuses. Overall, this is two minus, so platinum, going from four minus up to two minus, must be plus two. Let's put that together. The name, sodium, for my positive ion. Sodium tetrachloridal platinate 2 would be my overall name for this whole complex here, or this whole compound here, sorry. This is the complex, this is the compound. I've just split that up, yeah, I've just had a look to see what has to counter, because that has to equal 0, because this whole thing is neutral, to work out what this will be, to put this together as a name. That's what I'm looking at for the naming of these complexes, okay? Um, I'll do one more, and this is going to have more than one ligand attached to it because this is quite important as well. So, just getting a wee bit more complicated as we go through. So, it's always useful if you can find questions at kind of each stage of this. You can pause, you can come back. It's a lot of information for one video. Um, but let's have a look here. There's a chlorine in the bracket and a chlorine out the bracket. There are chlorines here that are donating. There's one here that's a counter ion. So Cl is always minus, which means that this, CO, NH3, 4, Cl2, must have a positive charge. That's why this has come first before the chlorine. So let's ignore, let's put this to the side just now and just talk about this here. Chlorine's chloridal. Amine is amine. There are two, okay, so di, we know that already. There are four of these, tetra. And it's positive, so it's just going to be cobalt. And there we have to figure out our charge. Two minus charges, these are neutral. Overall, I'm going to plus, so I'm going from 2 minus to 1 plus. Cobalt must have a plus 3. I'm going to check. Amine comes before chloride alphabetically. So that's the right way around. This, however, actually isn't the way it's on the slide, and I'm going to show you that in a wee second. This is actually wrong. It should be cobalt. I'm showing you this because this is from a common kind of question paper. Um, it should go this way around because C comes before N. 
So when we actually have the complexes written like this, the symbols go alphabetically and the name, the names of the ligands go alphabetically. I know, it's confusing, but you will frequently find questions where it's written like this, which is why I've kept it in so they can talk about it, because you will see them. So it's worth actually then checking and making sure it is written properly. Note that this is the other way down to the way it's written by name, and it's just by alphabetical by name, alphabetical by symbol. Let's get back to this name, because I'm not finished. Tetraamine dichloridyl cobalt 3 chloride is my counter ion. That's what I'm looking at here. Um, it is definitely a mouthful. There's a lot that we have to talk about here. This is cobalt, not cobaltate, because this is positive. Amine before chloridyl, because A comes before C. But this name was actually wrong. This not, sorry, this formula was actually wrong because the, the chloride should come before the amine part. That's a, a few that's a few examples for us having a look at. Um it is worth looking through quite a lot of other ones to get this into your head. Another thing that you will see is the water ligand written as H2O. So let's say, I don't know, I don't know, this probably isn't a real thing, but let's say it looked like this. Okay. It won't because manganese isn't going to have an oxidation number of zero, which this would. But what would actually, this would be wrong, what should actually be written is manganese OH2. The oxygen comes first in this nomenclature because it's the oxygen that's donating its electrons into the metal ion. Okay, not the hydrogens here, as it would show. So you will see again things written as H2O when it should actually be OH2. And you've never seen it written like this before. But it's very important to see it like that. That's my aqua ligand. So it will likely come if you had it with chloride in here as well. It's going to come first alphabetically. Um, but it's going to be written OH2 and not H2O. Um, so that is just one to look out for. That's where I'm going to leave the transition metals at the moment. That's a lot of information we've gone through. What a transition metal is, what a variable oxidation state is. We've looked at our transition metal complexes. You are naming and you're going to have your positive before your negative ion. And then your transitional metal complex, you're going to have your ligands in alphabetical order. Don't worry about the tetra and di, it has to be the ligands that are alphabetical order, followed by the metal. And if it is a negative transition metal complex, that metal must have its Latin name, followed by its oxidation number. Water will be written OH2 and not H2O. Chloro, bromo, fluoro, oxo, cyano are no longer. It is now chloride, bromide, io iodido, fluoride, and oxido. And you will have plenty that you can go through and try. So quite a lot of information this time. Next time it's going to be colour in transition metal complexes. So we're going to look at D to D transitions and how we actually get these vibrant colours um, in these transition metal complexes. So I will see you next time.